So now we're going to make this follow this using a motion path. So we won't use that one directly. What we do need to do is the path point. Let's move that out. The path will go where the pivot point is. So we need the pivot to be closer to the middle of the track. So press insert and then with your middle mouse button just moving that up. So we've just adjusted that pivot. So we'll duplicate that because we want to keep that one to create the rest of the, the, the pieces of track. <coughs> Again let's get rid of some of this. Um, we need the time slider to demonstrate this. So like that, select the curve. like that, select the curve, hold down space, animate, motion path, attach to motion path, open up the options, so we need, we need to define, as that goes around the path, we need to help define which which way it should be pointing up. Um, if that's set to scene up, what will happen is this will go around here and as soon as it gets to this point here, it will get confused and the track will flip because it, will, it won't be sure which way is up. So the track will flip there and then as it comes around the back here, it will flip back the other way. Uh, we need to eliminate that. So, so to do that, set that to object up and this to the name of the circle left track path so we're now telling this uh, to use the up position um, the, the up direction from the curve rather than the, from, from the world so if we attach that you can see it's moving along the path but for some reason it's not positioned right okay so the problems fixed um, the issue with the track was I needed I I froze the transforms on this and you didn't have to because that was confusing it then with where the uh, the actual up value was. Um, so let's just quickly do that motion path again. So all I did was this was snapped it back to the world route, freeze the transforms there, and then moved it back into position. So um, bit of a bit of a cock up, but these things happen, right? So select that, select the path, animate motion path, attach to motion path and what I'm going to also add inverse up because what it might do is it might flip the track the wrong way around we can always change this after if it's not so object up, set to left track path, fingers crossed that looks a bit better if we, now when we move the time slider as you can see the track moves around. Let's get rid of the grid. So what the motion path has done is simply specified move this object around this path and it used the time slider as its main start and end point. So it starts on frame one and as you can see here we have the a marker showing us the final frame and as we move over the animation the track moves round but when it gets to 24 it, it stops if we 
bring everything back. Here we go. If we check, the problem is if we move that up to 48 or any other value, you'll notice as soon as it gets to 24, it stops. There is an easy way to fix that, and that's in the graph editor. Um, this your motion path, path will have keys set on the U value. Um, you can just set these to loop, infinitely loop. Um, so the animation for that will loop continuously. Um, but we don't want to do this this way. <clears throat> we don't want the, uh, the animation of the track determined by when animation is actually playing. What we would rather do is have the animation of the track depend on where the track is moving. So when you move this curve forward, the track will move. So if you move it slowly, it'll move slowly. If you move it quickly, it's a bit more of an intuitive way to animate and um, it will produce a nicer result than just relying on the time slider. Because this way you'll have to mess about with keys uh, and things to uh, get the, uh, the speed right. Uh, so how do we fix this? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to still use the motion path, but the U value, which I showed you before, we're going to take over that and use an expression to run that, depending on where the, uh, the Z value of this curve is. So as this, we're just basically going to say, as that moves in that direction, move that along the path at a certain speed. And to do this, we need a, a funky bit of maths. Um, if I open up the script editor, so basically we need a bit of maths like this, which is the position of the tread is determined by where the track position is divided by well not the track position sorry right we're going to find out where the tread is determined on where that track curve is and we're going to get that value which will be the Z the translate Z value and then we've got to divide it by 2 times pi times the actual length of the curve and then times that by 360 so um, yeah it's a bit of complicated maths but when we start to work it in we'll uh, it'll hopefully make a bit more sense so the curve position we know because that is just the the z value of our uh, of our main curve. Pi we know is 3.14 so what we need to do is find out the length of the actual curve and to do that we can use another bit of mel to help us. So if we open our script editor so we're going to use a command Make sure we've got the curve selected. That's right. Use the command arc line. We want construction history to be left on because we want it to. This will attach a node to the curve, which will always tell us what the curve's um, length is. <coughs> um, so because we've got the curve selected, that should, as you see here, it should have had, it's added a curving for one node. So if we open this up, and that there tells us the length of the curve. So 13.110. So in a script, we can actually query that by saying so in our uh, in our expression 
we can query that and then put it into there. So if the curve length does change, it'll update the expression. So to do that, we can just say get attribute, the name of the node. If we select that, press enter. See that gives us the uh, that queries that attribute for us, so we can put that into directly into the uh, expression. So we found out the length of the curve. So we've got, we know what this value be, will be because it's the z position. We know what pi is, it's 3.14. We now know what the curve length is because we can query this attribute we've just added onto it. So what we can start doing now is build this into a expression to drive the u value of the motion path.